you can see this water's pretty much crystal clear down through here. Should give us a good look at sign if there's any around here. I've seen a couple deer crossings, but I'm not seeing a whole lot else right now. It got really, really cold and the coon could have denned up already. As far as the water trapping goes, I'm also looking for muskrat slides and things like that, but you know, the predators are a good wintertime trapping game. Once you get into hard winter, coon and stuff kind of goes away. This is a real nice uh, meandering creek right here. Nice clear water in it. I do see some paw prints here and there on the bank, but I'm not seeing any real heavy sign. If I was going to set a small area like this, I'd probably come in and set it pretty heavy. Any place to even look like something that came down off the bank. I'd probably put some type of a water set in there with a cubby or something with some type of a fish lure in there and just take my chances for three or four days trapping that. If I didn't catch anything, I'd pull it all and move on. You can see that branch right there has been chewed off. That's a muskrat doing that. There's quite a few of them piled up right here. And there's a little pocket right here. It might have been some kind of a bank den or something at one time. None of it's fresh though. So there were definitely muskrat in here. And probably still is somewhere. Well, Rufus and I just got back from a short scout, a couple miles, just looking for animal sign, things like that. I wanted to see how this Seneca type pack frame was gonna ride and it's really, really comfortable. Now, the only thing I've got in here right now is a small 32 ounce container. I have two wool blankets, the tarp itself, which is an eight by eight tinsmith's oilcloth about 50 feet of hemp rope and cordage, and that's about all that's in there. So just enough for an emergency kit. If something were to happen, I've got my knife and my ferro rod on me and things like that. But just enough, if something were to happen, I'd have the kit, maybe a short overnight scout or something like that away from a base camp like this one. And you know, I'll tell you, the thing rides really nice. And there's a lot of things I like about this frame um, as opposed to the Roycraft frame. I'll talk to you about that here in just a second. It's really, really easy to get this on and off. But the Roycraft frame is very, very simple as well. There's no difference there as far as how you put it on. It just goes over and off the shoulders, very simple, just like that. You have one basic lark's head in the center of the frame here. And then these two go over the top of you. They come back around the bottom and basically go underneath here like this to tighten them up so this becomes your shoulder strap and this becomes around your waist strap. Really, really simple concept on things. What I do like about this is because you've got more of a square here instead of the rectangle or the triangle shape of the Roycraft, it allows you to get that load centered really well and you're not pulling everything to an angle up here at the top. Everything's pretty much square lashed, just above this upright, just above the bottom upright. So I really like that really well. And then it's just tied off in X fashion in the front. And the whole thing probably weighs, if I had to guess, with a full water bottle, 12 pounds maybe. Now, if I were planning to leave this on the pack, I would just go to the end, tie a quick pull in there just like that, and then I would just take the rest and daisy chain it through by pulling it through the loop pull it through the loop, pull it through the loop, pull it through the loop, and that will give me something that will come undone very easily. My tump liner or my bedroll straps aren't gonna get trashed. And then when I get to the top here, what I generally do is just use another toggle stick straight across here and through that to store it. Well, Rufus said he had a hankering for some bacon this morning, so I'm gonna make a spatula here real quick for our fry pan pretty simple I got this piece of maple here left over from the other day that we used on our Spanish windlass when we made our Seneca pack frame so we might as well use that to make our spatula so we're just gonna get this thing carved down flat in one area here
spark cleaned off of it. Even it up a little bit there in that spot. Get the back of it cleaned up a little bit. Just like that. Pretty good. Gives us about an eighth of an inch of thickness there squared. That's not bad. Don't need to be real big because our pan's not real big. That's pretty good for the front end. And we can carve that down, make that nice here directly. So let's get this thing handled the way we want to here real quick. Let's take and kind of split this down a little bit off of here like this. that off come around the other side about the same spot split that down a little bit like that don't need to be real long either not gonna need to be near that long We don't need to be any longer than where that knot's at right there. So we'll just cut him off right there. Just like that. That's going to be plenty long enough for us. Put these scraps over here in our fire lay. Get all this stuff put in our fire lay. Use that to cook our bacon. All right, so we got a pretty good rough shape here. Now, I've got a tool roll here that I kind of been working on for woodcraft and bushcraft. It's basically been the tools that I've been carrying around rolled up a lot in a piece of brain tan. And I found this tool roll on Amazon for about 12 bucks made out of uh, suede split. So I kind of put my tools in this that I use quite often and it works out pretty good. So I've got my hook knife in here. I've just got a toggle in here. Doesn't really have to be in there. It's just there. I've got my crooked awl, my net needle and mesh gauge. I have a new scoop gouge in here. It's made in Sweden that I bought recently. It's really, really nice for making spoons and carve outs and things like that. I've got it in there, and then I've also got a small carving knife in there, which is just a high carbon steel martini in a leather sheath. And I've got that in there as well. So then I've got a couple of larger sail needles tucked into the last pocket for doing stitching on bark and leather. Pretty simple roll, but it also gives me that versatility of having a few tools in something that's compact that they're not going to fall out of that I can tie up. So we're going to use our hook knife now to work on our spatula here real quick. Now we're just going to start to carve the handle down 
a little bit more of the shape that we're looking for here. And I'm all about this stuff not being anything fancy, I'll tell you. I don't think it needs to be. Like I said, you can make this thing as fancy as you want to, or as unfancy as you want to. It doesn't have to be some work of art, but it can be if you want it to be. That's the beauty of bushcraft. You're making something that's going to do what you want it to do. And as long as it's functional, that's really the main criteria. Does it do what it's supposed to do? As long as it does, you're in pretty good shape. Doesn't necessarily have to be something beautiful. It just has to work. I'll tell you what, that's not too shabby. That's not too shabby. That thing will definitely work just exactly the way it is right now. May not be the most beautiful thing on the planet, but I guarantee you it'll flip some bacon. We're about to find out. Oh, that's a big thick piece right there, buddy. I must have Rufus's name on it.
He's being pretty patient for a dog, I tell you. Yeah. He'd love to have a chunker out of his pan, I can guarantee you, but too hot, Rufus. You're gonna have to wait till some more cools down, buddy. Sit. 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 Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Man. Hmm? Good man. Good boy. You're a good boy. You're a good boy. You're a good boy. You're a good boy. Good boy, Rufus. Well, folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School, and Rufus and I appreciate you joining us out here today for this just messing around type video. A little short scout, testing out the Seneca frame, making a quick spatula, and cooking up some bacon for lunch. I appreciate everything you do for me. I appreciate everything you do for our business, for our school, for our family, for everything that you do for our sponsors, affiliates, instructors, and friends. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.